Hello, long time no talk. Hello, poet readers, and whoever else, welcome back to the channel. It is officially day one of my two week long term break. It's short, so I plan to make the most of it reading wise. A few weeks ago, I thrifted this set of The Lord of the Rings with the plan of binging them during the break, which is now. However, I actually did not realize that I had to start with The Hobbit. I just found out from my friend who read it first before me. So I have The Hobbit now in my hands. I bought it with my birthday money and I'm actually a good chunk of the way through. I've read this much. This copy wasn't thrifted. I bought it from Mitsukoshi, Fully Book Mitsukoshi, which is the best Fully Book brand there is. I would have liked a thrifted copy, but I still don't regret buying this because it's so beautiful. It has illustrations. This is a page I am on now. There's an illustration for every start of a chapter two. So let me give you guys my thoughts so far. This whole desire to start The Lord of the Rings actually all started in a class I had, a literature and pop culture class. My professor had us watch a bunch of movie trailers. We got to choose which ones we watched. And I happened to choose the trailer for one of The Lord of the Rings movies. And 10 seconds into that trailer, I was already, my God, I want to binge the books within this year and then watch the movies right after, also within the year. So I am on a mission. I am embarking on a journey. And I'm gonna take you guys along with me on that journey. So far, I'm having a blast with The Hobbit. I actually expected the writing to be way more tedious and difficult to understand than it actually is because The Hobbit is such a like, it's such high fantasy to me and I associate high fantasy with hard to read writing, but that isn't the case at all. It's pretty easy to read. It's comparable to the Spiderwick Chronicles, which I also love and I also plan to buy the whole set. <laughs> you guys know me. You know I love whimsical fantasy, so I am eating it up. I started it two days ago on Sunday, I think. It is now Tuesday. I think that filming this whole experience is gonna motivate me to read even more and stick to it because one bad thing to having a lot of free time is that I have a lot of free time to do a bunch of other things. So my attention right now is divided between this book and watching TV shows and movies. Right before this, I came from the cinema, which is why I'm dressed up. I watched a movie with my mom. I watched Alien Romulus, which was... As somebody who has watched the previous Alien movies, I think I've watched all of the previous ones. I thought it was really good. I love that there's a younger cast now and I love how they kind of use the same sort of tropes and plots from the previous films, but just built up on it in a more modern and fresh way. I'm not here to talk about Alien. I'm here to talk about this book. So as of currently, I'm on page 150. It's chapter seven. The dwarves have just been dropped off by the eagles in this sort of safe place. Gandalf is leaving them and they're about to continue on this journey alone and without the wizard's help. I'm actually having a really easy time retaining all the information that I'm getting from this book, which is very surprising. I have very bad memory and it's just so fun. I listen to the soundtrack while I read and it just makes the whole experience so much more immersive. So yeah, that's that for the introduction to this video and the first reading update. I'll come back to you and have another update. <laughs> Hello! It is day two of me vlogging my reading The Hobbit experience. I am currently 72% through the book on page 246. And I'm having a blast. I'm having the time of my life. I'm going much faster through it than I thought because filming this whole experience is encouraging me to pick up the book. Now that you're here with me in my bedroom at night in the semi-darkness, let me run you through what I've been doing with my life this term break so far. So what I do is every day I wake up obviously and then the first thing i do is pick up this book try to read some of it from the moment my eyes open no thoughts whatsoever just pick up the book and then i start immersing myself in the world because i find that the best times to read are in the mornings immediately after i wake up and at night right before i go to sleep now 
in between those two times of the day, I spend my time either going somewhere, and if I'm just at home, that's kind of dangerous because I end up watching shows all day. Right now, what's been occupying most of my time is watching Ginny's Kitchen. I watched season one right before term break while I was doing my finals. Yesterday, I made the mistake of starting season two. So the whole day today, well, not the whole day, but for a big chunk of it, I was just sat on the sofa watching it. Not the best use of my time, but also I'm not trying to be too hard on myself for just watching shows because it's my vacation. It's my term break and I can do what I want and I don't have to be productive. But since I want to read all four books of The Lord of the Rings, then I have to do something else besides watching. Since I have so little left in this book, the smart thing would be to just read it tonight and just try to finish whatever I could. So by tomorrow, I'll be done with it and then I can get on with the next book. But I'm very tempted to continue watching my show. We'll find out tomorrow if I ended up watching my show or not. Hello everybody! I have officially finished reading The Hobbit. All 386 pages of it done. So now we talk about my thoughts in a very casual sit-down manner. First, let me talk about my expectations going into this, which were I thought it was going to be very hard to read given that it is sort of this really big fantasy series, kind of high fantasy, and the world is really rich and well-structured. Usually, I associate those types of fantasies with being really hard to read and just having so much complex details to the world building that it becomes difficult to keep up but actually with this it was pretty easy to keep up with everything going on. I would say the only difficult thing was trying to remember everybody's names but even then it didn't really matter because the only names I needed to remember were Bilbo, Gandalf, and Thorin. And the other ones I didn't really keep them in my head because it didn't really matter to me. Aside from that, going into this, I thought I was gonna have the time of my life. Something I really love reading about in books are cozy stories about little woodland creatures and this gave me everything I wanted and more in that department. It was so fun, especially since most of the time I spent reading this was at night just in the darkness, the absolute darkness with my lamp on and it was just the best, most whimsical time ever. It was a great idea for me to start reading this during my break because I felt like if I started it with a lot of things going on, I wouldn't have been able to really immerse myself in the world and I wouldn't have appreciated it as much as I did with all the time that I had. I think it also helped that there were so many illustrations dispersed all throughout the book. If this would only focus, those little dark lines you see. Those are all watercolor illustrations back to back. Let me show you an example. Here's one, here's the other side of the page, and I think that really helped to break the pages down for me a bit so that the chapters aren't just one after the other, one after the other, and just so many information because I get easily overwhelmed when I'm reading a book continuously and it just seemingly goes on forever and ever. And they also help me imagine the scenes a bit more. So in general, the vibe was immaculate. It felt very warm. I felt very represented by Mr. Bilbo Baggins because he's just the ultimate homebody. He enjoys staying in his house, just eating stuff, lounging by the fire, doing chill activities, and I am the same way. I felt very seen, I felt very represented. <laughs> so yeah, that is it for this video. If you've read The Hobbit, maybe you've read it along with me in this video, who knows? Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments. Let's talk about it together. Let's fawn over it together. <laughs> It is currently Saturday, August 24th, and I am on my way to the Big Bad Wolf Book Fair. This is the first time I am ever going to the Big Bad Wolf Fair. I've known that it's a thing for like years. I've had friends go to it, but I've never really gone myself because I'm not a big fan of crowds. But if you recall, last year, I think it was last year, I went to my first 
book fair ever the manila international one i would say i had a blast because i wasn't really able to buy a lot of books but it was a good experience and i liked putting myself out there there was a lot of people which i did not like so now i am actually really excited for this one and one of the main reasons why i'm gonna go is it's actually very near me this time tin cantrick it's very near the place i go to on the weekends anyway so i thought why not go? So let's talk about the books I'm aiming to buy. I've seen pictures of the books being sold at the fair. They seem pretty like common. I've seen them in bookstores before. So I'm aiming for ones that I can't find anywhere. Specifically, Hemlock Queen by Hannah Whitten. The sequel to the Foxglove King book two in the Nightshade Crown trilogy, I think it's called. This is a lip balm I'm using for today. That's really the only book I'm aiming to buy. I have a feeling that if I'm gonna buy more than that, they're probably gonna be fantasy books, romantic books. I'm not really doing much because it's just the book fair. It rained pretty much all afternoon yesterday and a little bit throughout the night. So it's kind of cold. So this is what I'm wearing. I love wearing cardigans. My number one dream in life is to live in a cold country just so I could wear cardigans and sweaters every single day because I am at my comfiest and most confident when I'm wearing a comfy, very soft sweater or cardigan or some sort of long sleeve thing. I thought I would vlog this since it's my first time going. Up until this point, I'm doing very good at filming. Will I film inside? We'll find out. <laughs> Let me take a sip of my drink to revitalize myself. Before I show you guys the books that I bought, let me give you guys a little review of the whole experience. As I said earlier, I was very excited going into it. We went a little early to avoid the crowd since it's a Saturday. The weekend brings a lot of people. On first impression, coming in, I was like, wow, there were a lot of tables stacked with books. But the first thing we saw were the children's books. You have to go around those before you get to the fiction, the nonfiction. And then once we arrived at the fiction, immediately I was like, oh, what are these titles? Oh. So the whole thing with this book fair and why it's like such a big thing and so many people go to it each year, I think it happens each year, it's because the books are cheaper than the typical retail price for books now, which is like 800 to 1000 pesos each. That was also the reason why I went because I wanted to buy good books for cheaper. However, they did not have that many good books. My first gripe, I told you guys about how my main goal was to buy the Hemlock Queen, if not the Hemlock Queen, then other fantasy books. They did not have a designated section for fantasy, which was very weird. It was very strange because the only thing they had close to fantasy was sci-fi. And they had a Lord of the Rings books and other fantasy books in the sci-fi section. So immediately, my first goal, my initial plan was spoiled. So I just had to go through what fiction sections they had. They had romance, they had young adult, horror, thriller, crime, sci-fi, and general fiction, and also literature. I did my very best to look through every single table in the fiction area so I could at least buy some books and like take advantage of the whole cheaper prices thing. So this is what I came home with. I got four books. Two of them I got from the literature section. They're both poetry, just very short collections. The first one is Peaches Goes It Alone by Frederick Seidel. Faber books. I love Faber books. I trust them, so I bought it. And this one reminded me a lot of one of the 
cover editions for the unbearable lightness of being which i love so it really called out to me and i ended up buying it this is say uncle another poetry collection by k ryan i searched it up on goodreads it had pretty good reviews so i bought it that's two and i need to sneeze and then the third one is a book I actually had on my TBR on Goodreads. I didn't know. I just found out when I searched it up. Horrid by Katrina Leno Lino. It's giving horror. It's giving mystery. It's giving thriller. It's giving fall. It's giving cozy. So I bought it. It's also very similar and it reminds me a lot of the cover for... I forget what book that is, but I'll just insert the cover here. I'm actually very excited for this. And then the last book is A Bright Ray of Darkness by Ethan Hawke. I really respect Ethan Hawke as a performer, and this is about theater. Ethan Hawke originated from theater, so I think this is gonna be really good. I also just really love the cover. It's so simple, but it's also so striking. So yes, those are the four books I bought at the fair. This I'm really excited for. I actually might start reading it immediately. I'm losing energy and brain cells by the second, so I think I'm gonna end this video here. This is my cutesy little haul. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week ahead. Goodbye. Also, this pimple on my chin, she's really angry. She's mad. And I got a headband. What do we think? You can't really see it. Bye.